So today's topic is 4.4 combinations, and that's on pages 273 to 282. And our curriculum outcome is to demonstrate understanding of combinatorics, including the fundamental counting principle, permutations, and what we're talking about today, which is combinations. Our lesson objectives is to learn the uh, difference between a permutation and a combination, to learn the combination formula, and to be able to use the combination formula in to answer questions regarding combinations. So, so far, the questions that we've been answering are all examples of permutations, or what we call arrangements, in which the order is very important. And so some examples of that were we talked about arrangements of books on a shelf, that's when the, uh, the order was important. Arrangements of people in a row, and the order in which you enter your combination into your lock at your locker. And the reason that the combination's in quotation marks is because a combination lock is, isn't actually a combination, it's a permutation, because the order is important. Because a combination, the order does not matter. Just choosing the objects to be part of the combination matters. So you can't put in the combination to your lock in any order. Since the order is specific, it's actually a permutation lock. And so examples where, com where we're talking about combinations, if you're choosing people for a grad committee, it doesn't matter which order you choose them. If you're choosing books to take on a trip, uh, assuming that you read books, um, it doesn't matter which order you choose those books to take on the trip. It may it may matter on um, the order that you read them, but not the, the order that you choose them. And which cards you have in your hand when you're playing poker, etc., any sort of card game, it doesn't matter what order those cards are in, um, just the fact that they're in your hand. So our combination button on our calculator is NCR, and NCR is N factorial over R factorial times N minus R factorial, remembering that N is always your total number of objects, and R is the number that you're actually taking. So if you're going to find... Um, Take, picking five cards out of 13, and the order doesn't matter, it would be 13C5. So for example, there are four girls and five boys that want to be part of a four-person committee for grad. How many committees could be formed? How many of those committees could be formed made up of an equal number of boys and girls? How many committees could be formed that include at least one boy? And how many committees could be formed that don't include a boy? So. If we take a look at the first one, how many committees could be formed? Well, there's only one choice we have to make, and that's uh, we have nine people total, four girls, five boys, and we're just gonna take four of them for this committee because there's you wanna be part of a four-person committee. So 9C4 is 126 different committees that could be formed. Part B, how many committees could be formed made up of an equal number of boys and girls? Well, now you have two choices to make. <clears throat> Excuse me. You need to know um, how many boys you're gonna have, and you need to know how many girls you're gonna have. So this is sort of the fundamental counting principle where we need to fill in two blanks. So the boys, there's five boys total, so that would be five C2, because we need to take two of those boys, because it has to be equal number of boys and girls. And that means we have to take uh, two out of the four girls. Our total answer there is 60. Part C, it says how many committees could be formed that include at least one boy? Well, this is an, an example of cases. So, because if we're gonna include at least one boy, we could have one boy, or we could have two boys, we could have three boys, or there could be four boys in that committee. So uh, one boy would be 5C1, because there's one boy that we're choosing, and then 4C3, the three girls. That gives us an answer of 20. Um, two boys would be 5C2, and then 4C2, two boys and two girls, which we just found out is 60. Uh, three boys, so it would be 5C3, and 4C1 then, and that gives us an answer of 40. And then all four boys would be 5C4, which gives us an answer of 5. So when we add all these together, because it is a um, what we call cases, um, we have 60 and 40 is 125. So 125 of those committees would include um, at least one boy. Part D says how many committees could be formed that don't include a boy? Well, that means it's gonna be all girls, so you would call that 4C4, and the answer to that one is one. Now, another way to get that answer is to take a look at how many committees we had all together, 126. 125 of them include at least one boy, which means the difference, 126 minus 125, would include uh, no boys, and that would be one. So in summary, in a combination, the order of your objects does not matter. Just the way that you can choose those objects is what matters. You need to read your question carefully. You might need to make more than one decision, so then you'd be using blanks or the fundamental counting principle. And you may also need to use cases. Look for keywords like at least, things like that, to help you identify if you have to um, add up all your answers in the end. Your assignment is on pages 280 to 282. Uh, good luck, and we'll see you in class.